Hello, my name is Dave Nickerson, and I am doing an interview with Tommy Rodriguez. I'm going to answer five questions here on the video, one question and one video at a time. The first question Mr. Rodriguez asked me to answer is, what is your professional background in environmental science? My background started with a master's degree in biological sciences from Florida Institute of Technology in June 1976. And I returned to Florida in July 1977 to take a marine biologist position with the Florida Department of Natural Resources Marine Research Laboratory in St. Petersburg. As a fish biologist, I worked together with an invertebrate biologist partner, spending at least three consecutive nights per quarter year on commercial shrimp boats fishing in the Gulf of Mexico and Florida Bay from the Dry Tortugas to Pensacola. During the one-year project, we determined the bycatch of commercial shrimping operations by sampling, identifying, and recording all species of fish and invertebrates taken aboard shrimp boats engaged in the Florida Gulf fishery. Following termination of the shrimp discard project in 1978, I was assigned to a two-phase research project with the first phase as a description of the Florida Atlantic Coast silver mullet bait fishery from Key West to Fernandina Beach. Results of that research were published in the Florida Marine Research Technical Publications number 41 in April of 1984. Continuing with phase two, I began field and laboratory work to determine age, growth, reproduction, and life history of the silver mullet, Mugil Karima. Moristic data were collected from over 20,000 silver mullet captured from bays, estuaries, and the ocean along Florida's east coast. In order to differentiate mullet species from one another, I read many technical papers, observed museum-housed type species, and learned there were six extant mullet species occurring along eastern Florida. I left the Marine Research Laboratory in 1984 and before I could complete publication of the silver mullet age, growth, and reproduction data. While at the Marine Research Lab, I supplemented my state salary by taking two part-time jobs on the weekends for two different projects. From 1979 to 1982, I worked part-time with Missimer and Associates reviewing U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Section 404 permit applications to determine and qualify any proposed project-associated marine resource impacts and report my findings to the National Marine Fisheries Service in Panama City, Florida. Mr. Mern Associates was responsible for application review in Palm Beach, Broward, Dade, Monroe, Collier, and Lee Counties, but my work with the firm did not involve application reviews in mainland Monroe, Collier, or Lee. During those four years, I gained a lot of experience in the South Florida marine environment and learned to identify many of the emergent and submergent plant species, along with the invertebrate and vertebrate animals occupying those habitats. The second part-time project work was for Gamefish Research Foundation and involved shipboard observations and biological sampling of swordfish, Xiphius gladius, taken in the Southeast Florida longline fishery. I rode, aboard, I rode aboard small commercial vessels from Fort Pierce to Boynton Beach, Florida, that set 15 miles of longline gear in the Gulf of Mexico in the evening hours and soaked it until sunup. Not only did I learn much about swordfish while providing catch and associated data, but also learned the many species of non-target fish that were caught by the gear and that accompanied the small boats as they drifted north in the Gulf Stream all night. Less than a year after leaving the Marine Research Laboratory, I was contacted by CZR Incorporated, an environmental consulting firm from North Carolina that had just moved to Jupiter, Florida, and was looking for a biologist to join the team. In February 1985, I joined their team and began my true environmental consulting career. I worked on hundreds of projects in Florida and a few out of state. Most were associated with developing vacant land for residential, commercial, industrial, educational, recreational, or military use. 
project land size ranged from quarter acre single family residential lots to a 39,000 acre military expansion site. As the firm grew, I was fortunate to be promoted to vice president and served on the management team. We opened new offices in Jacksonville, Florida and Wilmington, North Carolina and grew to a 35 member firm by 1991. In 1993, I left CZR and started a new environmental consulting firm with Cheryl Carpenter. We named the company CNN Environmental Consulting Incorporated. After teaching and mentoring Cheryl in Corps of Engineers EPA permitting, our endeavor was short-lived and Cheryl took over the business herself in August of 1994. In October of 94, I joined Environmental Services Incorporated, headquartered in Jacksonville, Florida. The firm was one of the largest purely ecological consulting firms in Florida and offices in Raleigh, North Carolina, Stone Mountain, and Savannah, Georgia, as well as Destin and St. Augustine, Florida. I was charged with opening a new office for them in Jupiter, Florida. The Jupiter office took off and by 2002 had grown to 15 people, the third largest in the company. The company grew rapidly and expanded to 16 offices and 250 people in four states by 2006. I was promoted to ecological division manager in 2006 and given management responsibility for all three offices in North Carolina, two of the three in Georgia, and five of the eight in Florida. Due to the economic downturn beginning in 2007 and my advancing age, I was laid off by SI in October of 2008. I offered to be one of the first senior managers to be let go, so I was not surprised when I got the news. I started my current environmental consulting business in February of 2009. I am the sole employee of the Subchapter S Corporation named David Nickerson Incorporated. Ecological consulting services provided are included in the next section. Technical areas of my professional involvement as an environmental consultant in four consulting firms include wetland jurisdiction, permitting, monitoring, and mitigation, wildlife assessment, trapping and permitting, endangered, threatened, and species of special concern assessment, permitting, habitat management plan preparation, relocation, and monitoring, environment, environmentally sensitive lands, assessment, permitting, and planning, coral reef assessment and monitoring, as well as monitoring station installation and monitoring National Environmental Policy Act environmental impact statements and an environmental assessment draft and final document production and public involvement. The second question is, what do you enjoy most about what you do? And I have to say, what I enjoy most about what I do are the smiles and thank yous that I receive from clients when successfully assisting them realize their dreams. The third question is, have you ever been involved in restoration efforts? I have been involved in restoration efforts. Some have been private and some public. Professionally, I've been the ecological consultant for the town of Jupiter Island's beach restoration project since 1991. Following the late 1980s, regulatory agency acceptance of mitigation as compensation for proposed and permitted wetland impacts, I prepared many wetland mitigation plans for private and public projects. I also worked with owners of wetland mitigation banks to prepare plans for wetland restoration on their bank sites that historically were once wetland but had been converted to agricultural use. I've been involved as a volunteer with the Jonathan Dickinson State Park Dancing Lady Orchid Restoration Project since 2014. And just recently, I've been involved with the Martin County chapter of the Florida Native Plant Society in restoring native orchids in Hal Patioke Park in Stewart. Also, the Martin County Orchid Society is spearheading native orchid restoration projects on public land in Martin County, and I have been with that effort since day one.
The fourth question is, have restorations improved over the course of my career? I believe they have. I haven't had a lot to do with it, but during my career I observed a substantial change that occurred in a wetland mitigation restoration. Until 1999, wetland restoration was done on private and public land on a case-by-case -case basis, both on-site and off-site, and studies showed that success rates often were very low. Mitigation banking evolved in the late 1990s and improved wetland mitigation success by requiring that the functions lost from proposed project impact must be offset and verified prior to the proposed impact taking place. Regulatory agencies adopted mitigation banking as preferred over the former mitigation options, and as a result, many former wetland sites in Florida have been converted to wetland mitigation banks with restored wetland functions. The banks resulted in causing no net loss of wetland functions. Had mitigation banking not been approved, most of the current bank sites would have remained in agriculture or have been converted to an upland use. Another important change that occurred during my career was the use of tree spades, particularly large spades, to relocate trees, full-grown trees, from proposed impact sites to restoration sites. The use of tree spades drastically improved survivability of relocated trees. Another associated change during my career was the method by which wetland mitigation was assessed and calculated. The 1990s saw a regulatory agency change that required consultants and others to evaluate and calculate wetland function and success rather than simple wetland area by vegetation type when determining how much mitigation would be in, required. That change has resulted in mitigation projects restoring a higher quality of wetland. The fifth question is, is there any restoration project that I've been involved with that achieved success beyond expectations? I have been involved with and have evaluated many small restoration projects and very few have exceeded expectations. One that I evaluated and clearly exceeded expectations was the Habitat Relocation and Restoration Project at the Dyer Boulevard landfill site in Palm Beach County. The Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County paid a very high price to relocate all plants from their development site west of Florida's Turnpike to the restoration area that was a barren sand pit and east of the Turnpike. Should one enter the restoration area today, one would surely assume that Mother Nature planted those plants when in fact the entire area is man-made and exceeded everybody's expectations. That's the end of the, my response to the five questions. Thank you for the opportunity to answer your questions.